up Bubba Folk, this is Michael and Ben. We're here to talk about some of our gear review for duck season. Absolutely. Uh, I believe we're going to call this segment the Fubba Faux Flyway. That's it. So Sounds like a winner to me. We're just going to go ahead and talk about the things we use and the equipment that helps us survive duck season. Yeah. Because uh, like we said before, we're here to learn, share, and explore the outdoors. We're not the best duck hunters. Yeah, by any means. But we love to do it yeah. and we love to share what we know and hopefully we can learn from some of y'all down in the comments and from reaching out to us and see see how to do this game. So Ben, what you got to show us? Well, I'm gonna start off uh, first and foremost to show you you don't have to go out and buy Benelli, buy any of those fancy shotguns. Uh, this is a Mossberg 835 pump action shotgun. Three and a half inch gun. Uh, as you see, got the inside of it. Nothing in there, nothing to do. Uh, this is my gun I picked up, uh, what, last year? Probably yep. the last, last week or two of duck season last year. Um, didn't really get, get to use it much last year, but I put in work this year. We went and took some geese out uh, down down the road from the house. And this gun has been amazing. Geese. Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, you can see that video. Uh, just check back in our previously watched videos. It's the Catch and Cook Goose. Yep. But anyways, yeah, it's a great gun. I love it. Michael, what do you got? All right, man. This year, I've taken a step back in time, and I've got a Remington 870 Super Mag. This is also a three and a half inch receiver. Uh, normally, in previous years, I've shot a uh, Remington 1187, and I found during the winter time when it's cold, when we want to be duck hunting, the uh, receiver seems to freeze up or get stuck more so than in the winter. Yep. I don't know if it's a semi-auto problem, I don't know if it's my gun's problem, but I decided to go with the tried and true pump shotgun. So I'm going to give this a spin this year. Yeah. We'll see how it turns it. out. I have uh, I like the Remington line, I've always had good luck with them, and, and I can shoot my 1187 just fine. Yeah. It's just the, uh, you know, I've been pulled up right on a duck swinging, click, click, no shot, because it, it didn't cycle the previous round. So I don't want that problem. Yeah. And You'll know when you cycle it now. This is the yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I cycle that gun. Yeah. So, so we talk about our guns. You know, can't can't have any guns without the ammunition. So this year we'll do something different. We bought a box, a piece, a so, blue box, a blue box, the old Federal Speed Shock. So this is 100 shells. This year we're gonna do something crazy. So I shot BB during goose season. Um, I'm gonna try it for ducks. Uh, we're just not. You know, most of the time I'll shoot. I just hate not the not knowing if I actually hit something or if, you know, it didn't finish the duck and then end up having a cripple fly 20 miles away and then we don't know where it lands. So I bought a case of BB or a box of 100. Uh, Michael bought a box of four shots. So we're going to go back and forth, trade out a box or a few shells here and there and just try. I mean, we've shot both, but this year I actually did use. The speed shot BB, but it's three and a half. But either way, it'll be the same results. I th I think through my gun. Yeah. So. Now I have shot a uh, speed shot in the past. I think it's a good uh, piece of equipment. I I've never had a a failure or a, a misfire. I I prefer to shoot Federal and I prefer to shoot Kent when it comes to duck yeah. hunting. Now I don't, and the reason why is because I don't care nothing about spending a top tier price for a. Heavy shot, bismuth, tungsten, whatever, you know. Uh, we shoot steel shot, and Federal has always been a good a good shell for me. Like he said, I bought number fours. I've had good luck with, with fours and threes, so that's kind of, that's my wheelhouse. That's what I like to shoot at ducks. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for that. Absolutely. All right, let me show you something right here. We'll talk about some of our motion decoys. We've got the old, uh, mojo right here we've had this mojo gad wall going on eight years it's never failed us it's never let us down it still keeps... still running on batteries from last year yeah double a batteries from last year same double a's so uh I, I do like the way that this is an intermittent spin it'll stop and start on its own like that right there and start back up i think that's kind of a natural presentation and uh, this has just been a good a good mojo for it, motion decoy. Yeah, and all the main all the wings, as long as they're the magnetic ones, they all fit. So you could put yeah. teal wings, which are on what's on it now. 
You could do the mallard wings. You could do anything that's got the magnetic wings to them. They'll work. Then they'll, they'll. I mean, they're they're great and they'll hold. Um, so it's by far been one of the best we've had. It's been and a good month. Mo good month. Brand Cadwell. Well, hey, if you can still find them. They will run for a long time. And also, we went with the uh, Gadwall because they were a little bit less expensive than the King Mallards at mm -hmm. the time. Uh, that's kind of what we're about, having the most fun we can at the least expensive price we can. So. Yeah. But basically, it's just been a good, uh, the Mallard or the Teal or the Pintail, I, I think it's uh, the motions what they're after, not necessarily the color of the wings or the color of the head. So. Yeah. Next, we've got uh, one of our other. This is the Lucky Duck. Fantastic colors on this dude. Still got the original wings on there. Um, the only thing, the only con I'll say about this, um, man, the, the just some of the some of the small things. Color fades fast on them, but you know it may not look like it, but the beaks all bent up, and this just goes straight from bag to it's right out there in the water. I mean, yeah. we, we don't ever, doesn't get thrown around in a trailer. We just goes right in my backpack. I've got a spot specifically marked out for it to keep it from getting damaged. The wings hold up really nice. Uh, they get a little bend in them now, but uh, same thing as with the other guy. These are the batteries from last year. And this, you know, doesn't have the intermittent, intermittent Spain. Can't talk. <laughs> the intermittent uh, span. Span, that's what I was trying to say. Um, but, a, it's still a great uh, tool to have with us, and it's 100% it's waterproof, and it is also remote ready. So if we want to put a remote in it, pop that little dude out, replace it with a remote, and you can just sit there and click the button, turn it off and on. But uh, yeah, everything else has been fantastic with this one. Anything, I mean, anything out of the ordinary you like about it or don't like about it? I think it's a good motion decoy. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm not here to to tell you to use Mojo or to use yeah. Lucky Duck or to use this and that. Whatever works for you, works for me. Yeah, there's a reason so. we got both of them. These were cheap. Right. Uh, we got these, I think this is the last one that Dick's had whenever they quit selling duck decoys and all that. I think I paid like $40 for it. $40 for a, a spinning wing decoy. You can't, can't beat it. I mean, yeah. yeah, absolutely, you can't beat it. Uh, as far as our decoys go, we've got a mixed bag. We've got brand new decoys, we've got 10 year old decoys, we've got 20 year old decoys, yeah. we've got repainted decoys, glued decoys, shot decoys, it don't matter. Uh, as far as brands, I will say the, the more expensive brands with flocked heads, they do look better. Yeah. They're a little bit, they're, they hold up better, they're nicer, they don't fade as well, as, as bad. But for us, man, we got flambos, green head gear, Ducks Unlimited. Uh, yeah, any brand you can imagine, uh, it's in our spread. This isn't all our decoys. We've got literally an entire building. It's right over there. It's just full of our decoys. Um, anything from mallards to geese. To, I mean, you just name it. We've got it all. We've got a few. Uh, we've got some pintails, teal, mm -hmm. wood ducks, mallards, gray ducks. Uh, what else? I mean, just I mean, it everything. goes on and on. And we try to mimic our environment. We don't have a ton of pintails here. We have the uh, occasional pintails, so we throw a few in there just, just for it. Another thing we like to do is put uh, Canada Goose yeah. decoys in there with them because that's kind of a safe, you know, comfort zone. A yeah. comfort zone. If, if a duck sees a goose, they're like, man, this is a safe spot to be. I'm mm -hmm. going to white right in there. But, uh, back to the decoys, we've got a mixed bag. It don't matter what you use as long as they, they're not just sinking. I think they'll be fine. At that and that you've got to have some motion. Um, we have some motion ducks, uh, decoy spreader systems. Check them out; they're awesome. Uh, you just you set your decoys up on a rig. We've got a jerk string tied to it, and then an offset pole. So we'll show more of that this year. Whenever we yeah, get, whenever we, we get it, get it all set up out in the water, right. you'll see more of what it looks like. But those right there, that, that makes the world a difference. Just the motion between the, the mojos. We have butt ripplers we had we put out. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. Yeah. Um, but that just that that motion duck. Whenever you pull that string, all four of the ducks, or if you've got them trailed up to the eight like we've got, those ducks are swimming, and that motion is attracting more birds into your spread. Right. So, and if you can't go out and four uh, butt ripplers and shaking, mm -hmm. shaking and pucks and and it motion decoys, get yourself a jerk string, and it's yeah. The, you know, get you a piece of string and a piece of PVC pipe and tie them up and 
bait pulling that dude and anything to make that water move just a little bit. Yeah, that's that, all if, you need. If you're hunting, hunting timber, kick your legs. I mean, any kind of water move yeah. you can put on those decoys will make them snap to it and look that's right at that. So let's look at some calls, man. So I've got a few calls. Uh, I really, really like the Echo series. I like the way their their reeds are tuned. I just, mm -hmm. that's that's the way I like to blow calls. Uh, most of mine are double reed calls. I if you can blow a single reed, my hats off to you because I I prefer a double reed. That's just mm -hmm. what I can make sound the best. Yeah. So I've got a Echo inserted call. This was actually a homemade call. They just used the Echo inserts. This is a Hayes Hayes calls which I believe they use the echo insert because it sounds just like these. I've got an old Primo's Fat Lady, which this is my kind of my chuckle, an old hen sounding, comfortable hen. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to use. And I've got this R&T uh, for big water. It's loud, it's proud, and it's there for ducks to hear. So that's kind of what I use. I don't, I don't really use, I've got a, a Drake whistle that I keep on here, but my son has it, so. Uh, but I don't do a lot of goose calling because Ben, is the goose man. Uh, so that's what I use. So Michael's got the, the basic mallard replicated with his lanyard. Uh, man, I, I really just I branch off with different kind of species, you know. This same deal. I've got two Echo calls. Uh, this is a homemade call. It's not actually Echo branded, but it has the Echo inserts, which these, these two calls to me sound identical. So, you know, one good thing about them you know, we all have the same kind of sound in mallards if we're, you know, playing or blowing duck calls, they'll hear it and, you know, well, they all sound the same. So we're trying to add a little bit of versatility. Um, like you said, got the Dole Drake whistle. Uh, and I'm, I'm here to show you one thing. So these duck commander calls, everybody used, you know, the Hide of Duck Dynasty, everybody was buying these calls thinking, oh, they're just trash. You know, we use them for a season, throw them away. These calls are absolutely some of the best calls I've ever owned. And I'm not saying that, no sponsorship, nothing. They sound great, and then they still to this day are making new calls. Like this Jace Robertson Pro Series, last year, I pulled this call out and Michael had no idea that I had it. He said, dude, whatever call you had just then sounded just like it was a duck sitting on the water. And I mean, yep. that's that's one of the best calls I own. Still a little expensive, but you know, it's it's a, not as expensive as going out and buying a, a $300 R&T call or something like right. that. Um, but I've got all the species covered. I mean, I've got pintail, teal, uh, wood duck, teal hen, Canada goose, speckle belly. I mean, you name it, I've got it just about on this line here, and I've got a snow goose call sitting in my, in my bag too. So, got everything pretty much covered. The majority of what I have are the duck commander calls. I mean. They're they're great for the price point and they all sound amazing. And they, they do, they yeah. sound fantastic. I've heard a lot of folks, uh, it's 50-50. A lot of folks love them, a lot of folks hate them. Mm -hmm. I must be in that group that loves them because I think they sound fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I've never had one that I just wanted to throw in the water because it's, you know, flaring ducks. Yeah. So, I like them. I think they've done a fantastic job down there in Louisiana. Absolutely. They, they made a living in the market by making bird noises. Yeah. Who would have thought? So, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, we got waders. What kind of waders do you use? I'm going to show you a quick look at my waders. I have a, a pair of Drake Equators. Uh, is it early season or mid season? I think you got the, the MSTs. I've got MSTs mid season. Uh, they're fantastic waders. I love them. But I have found personally, I've got these Gator Waiter uninsulated boots with the chest waiter. No, these are uh, hip waiters, sorry. They go up to my waist, and uh, I feel like I can layer up more underneath these than I can my drakes, and I stay warmer with these uninsulated waiters than I do. Now, granted, it doesn't get freezing cold. We're in uh, Northwest Tennessee. Yeah. We're looking at 35, maybe 20, maybe 15 on a real cold day. Mm -hmm. 15 degrees, I can base layer and, and nice pants, good jacket, and I'm fine. Now, if you're hunting negative 30 degrees, by all means, go get sick, or go get yeah. great, go get the best of the best. Uh, and they, but these waders have been great. They help. They've held up fine, and I've I've been fine. You know, they work well for me. Yeah, so that's that's what I use. I use these, and I use a pair of uh, hip boots, which Ben's going to show you what he uses right mm -hmm. here. 
and either one worked fine. Yep, so uh, last year we were going back and forth, and I've got a pair of Drake equators as well. They're phenomenal waders. I've got the late season, so here, you know, when it's like 40 degrees, and we used to walk about a mile, mile and a half to where yeah. we duck hunted, it got pretty miserable walking in waders. So, something as simple as hip boots. I mean, that's it. Now you just drop these dudes on, and you could, if you wanted to, heck, I put, I can put a pair of Crocs in my bag, take these boots off at the door of the blind, and then we're good to go. I mean, these are uninsulated boots, so it's just like walking in rubber boots. And if you got a wade, you can layer up with, uh, you know, hot hands or the boot warmers, anything yeah, like anything. that. It'll all Jogging fit down your boot. Yeah. yeah. And then they just strap on, strap on, and you wear them around your belt, and they're they're fantastic. Uh, no leaks, and they were like. Half the price, no, like a quarter of the price is waiters. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what it is. I've just found that uninsulated boots and waiters work best for me. Yeah, in, in our climate and our uh, you know, work environment where we're at, they just it, I can layer up and I feel a lot more comfortable. I can move a lot better. Yeah, and so that's just that's just what it is for me. But, anyways, that's our uh, our little rig rundown and kind of our basic equipment we use now we've got uh, boats and we've got blinds and whatever else and we'll go over all that too but just for getting started you know we're a little bit over a month away from oh yeah. duck season well hey guys if you like this video do us a favor man smash that like button down at the bottom and also subscribe because we you know the breakdown everybody watches our videos it's more people that are not subscribed than are subscribed so if you don't mind it'll help us out a lot just hit that subscribe button and most importantly ring the bell if you don't ring, ring the stinking, notification if you don't ring the stinky bell you're not gonna find out anything we're doing that's so, right um hey guys if you enjoyed this video do all three remember keep it both up lock it in